Hey, God bless you today, name by name and person by person. Thanks for being with us today. Welcome to the Daily Reminder. Once again, this gives us an opportunity to share a verse or two, a thought or two with you, and hopefully it'll just be a nugget for you to carry you on through the day. Um, you know, the Bible does say in Hebrews 2 and verse 1, we ought to give the more earnest heed to those things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. We're encouraged through the scriptures to really hang on tightly to those things, those truths, those values that we have learned through the scripture. And we're encouraged that it's just, we see it in the life of Paul, we see it in the life of Peter, the writer of Hebrews, that was a reminder to the church abroad of those things that they did know. So let me read a couple verses for you. This is actually out of the New Living Translation in Genesis chapter 16. Remembering in chapter 15, God made Abraham, or Abram, he wasn't even Abraham yet, he made him a promise that his descendants would be as vast and numerous as the sands of the seashore and the stars of the sky. And yet he did not have one son. He did, they did not have one child. And so in chapter 16, verses 1 through 4, again, this is in the New Living Translation. This is what the scripture says. Now Sarah, Abram's wife, had not been able to bear children for him, but she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarah said to Abram, the Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abraham agreed with, a uh, with Sarai's proposal. So Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abram as a wife. This happened 10 years after Abram had settled in the land of Canaan. So Abram had sexual relations with Hagar, and she became pregnant. Now, let me, let me just say this. Sometimes it's really difficult to wait for the promises of God. Again, just one chapter earlier, God had promised Abraham or Abram, your, your descendants will be as vast and numerous as the stars of the sky, the sands on the seashore. But sometimes waiting is difficult. Sometimes waiting for God becomes extremely hard. And the temptation then is we, we feel like we want to help God with what he said. He's made us a promise. He's given us promises. There are things that he's talked to us about what he wants to do with our life and what the future is going to look like and what we can expect. And we're holding on to those things. But sometimes the wait, the W-A-I-T can just be wait, W-E-I-G-H-T. Hopefully I spelled that right. The waiting on the Lord can just be heavy because we've waited so long. And again, we just decide, and God's not asking for help, we just decide that we can help the Lord. That is exactly what happened in the life of Sarah and Abram. They decided that the way God was going to do this, you find no record of this, God didn't suggest it, it wasn't even God's mind, and they decided to go ahead and do it. Sarah thought, well, maybe it's by my handmaiden Hagar that I'll obtain children. Listen, waiting is imperative for the Christian life. Wait, waiting on God develops some things in us that are absolutely necessary. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 31, classic verse, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. The wait there is not just sitting around staring at a wall and twiddling your thumbs. The wait there, as we wait on God, we wait with hope, our hearts hopeful. Listen, not I hope this will happen, not a wish, the hope is a hope of expectation. We need to wait. The promises of God that he has made for us, we need to wait with a hope-filled, heart-filled, hopeful, heart-filled expectation. You see the same word in Psalms 27 and verse 14. David says, wait upon the Lord. Be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord with expectation, with hope. Psalms 37 and verse 7, David said, rest in the Lord and wait patiently on him. Whatever God has said to you he's going to do, he's going to do it. The waiting is a process, and the waiting process develops some things in you and I that are necessary for maturity, for growth, to strengthen us in the adventure and the journey that God has called us to. God bless you. Have a great day.